Welcome to part 5 of our Chicago Bears Madden 23 Rebuild series. I want to start off this video by saying that, of course, if you've watched to this point, you know that we're coming off an amazing 16-1 season, Super Bowl win. So with that being said, I feel that after this season, it may be time to move on to our next team. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. If you're enjoying the series, if you'd like to see us continue for at least another couple of years, Depending on the feedback, I'm more than glad to do that. However, I am kind of leaning towards moving on to our next team, whether that be the Seahawks, Falcons, Titans, Jets, just a few teams off the top of my head that I'm leaning towards going with next. Let me also know in the comments, you know, who you'd like to see in future videos. What team should we rebuild? What requests do you have? I'm always listening. I'm always happy to, you know, fulfill those. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. And as we enter the offseason, here is our roster. You look at the offensive side of the ball, no major holes really. The only weakness that I see is left guard, and you can definitely do a lot worse than a 76 overall right there, so we're definitely okay there. Heading over to the defensive side, let's just take a quick look here. The defensive line is solid. Leonard Barker is finally going to be a starter. He's waited a couple years. He was a rookie with Hidden Dev. He just hasn't quite cracked the starting lineup, so I definitely have high hopes for him. Outside of that, very solid. The trade for Greg Newsome was a great move for us. We've got him locked up long term, and yeah, we're just very, very solid on both sides. And while I wouldn't say that we have any major holes at this exact moment, we do kind of want to look towards the future. So whose players, excuse me, which players have contracts that will be expiring at the end of this year? Ones that maybe we bring back, ones that maybe we look into replacing this offseason or at least getting a head start on. Let's just take a quick look here. Javante Williams is the first one. He is on the franchise tag. Luckily, though, we took Von Rayford in the first round of last year's draft. He just didn't quite show us a whole lot. We did have him start a couple games towards the end of the year once we already had the one seed locked up, and Javante Williams just played completely different for us. He would put up massive games, like 170 yards, 7 or 8 yards per carry, and we just didn't see that from Von Rayford. So I'd like to let Rayford develop for at least another year, and then I think at that point we would be safe to let Javante hit the open market. After Javante, up next we've got Justin Tucker, kicker, not too concerned about that. Jaquan Brisker's contract will be up, depending on what he wants, depending on his level of interest in the team, we definitely do want him back long term, so strong safety isn't really a major need for us, I think he will be here for the foreseeable future. Evan Ingram, his contract will be up, he's 30 years old, he is someone I think we will let walk, despite the fact that he has been very good for us. Nearly 1,000 yards last year, we do have Cole Komet behind him though, who we extended, he's got 4 years left, he'll have 3 at the end of this year, so Evan Ingram is a player we don't really need to worry about replacing either. We could look for a tight end too with maybe one of our mid-round picks that we can develop, but not a huge concern for us. After Ingram, we do have Yannick Ngakwe. Defensive end is going to be a position that I think I will look to address early on in the draft. Depending on how the prospects look, I definitely think we go defensive end with our first round pick. Jonah Jackson, another player whose contract is up, a left guard, I believe we have him at right guard right now. He's played very well for us. He's only 28, will be 29 at the end of the year. Um, depending on what he wants, depending on our cap situation, would like to bring him back, but I think offensive lineman is a position we go maybe in rounds one or two, because we do have a need there already, and if he doesn't like us or if he's requesting too much money, we may have two guard spots to fill. After that, we've got Kyler Gordon. He hasn't seen a lot of playing time for us. He's kind of hidden on the depth chart. He's actually someone, I'm going to throw him up on the trade block, see what we can get for him. Because if we can get value, I mean, he just, he'll get a pick here or there. He's still just, no, we don't want to set him as a team captain. What am I thinking? Add him to the trade block. I mean, I think he could be good for someone. I definitely think he has starting potential just not for us right this second, and he's not going to get a whole lot better. And okay, after him, do we have anyone left? I really don't think so. Braxton Jones has not done anything for us. Vilas Jones, his rookie contract is expiring. He's about to be 29. That's crazy. Yeah, he's not coming back. Zach McPherson, no. Okay, we will have a punter whose contract will be up, but again, not a major concern. 
So let's take a look and see who has hit the open market. Nick Chubb is 99 overall, 29 years old. We don't have a need at running back. Kyle Pitts would be so much fun. He just has no interest in us whatsoever. We can't afford to overpay at this point. We're sitting with 17.8 million in cap, and we do need to be a bit frugal this offseason. Devontae Smith would be fun. We just don't have a need there. Shaq Barrett is lukewarm, also not really a scheme fit for us unless we were to move him to end. Panay Sewell is intriguing. He likes us. Just 24 years old. We don't exactly have a need there, but, you know, depending, Elkton's possibly getting up there in age. Maybe we work something out with that. I doubt it, but it would be fun. Keenan Allen, no need. Elijah Moore, no need. We're just going to skip through the receivers. Evan McPherson, that's interesting. He's 26 years old. Could be the long-term replacement for Justin Tucker. He's a superstar. We might come back to that one. Brandon Ayuk is there. Justin Reed. Trey Smith is out there. That is intriguing. What would it take to get Trey Smith in here? If we offer him something neutral, where does that put us? It's going to leave us with little to no cap space, and I doubt we're top of his list. Let's just take a quick look here and find out. What does that get us? Oh, okay, so we're right up there with the Titans. Yeah, I think that we will go ahead and offer that to him. He's 26 years old. That would fill an immediate hole for us, give us some wiggle room as far as what we want to do in the draft. Mike Williams, Harrison Butker, Greg Rousseau. I wish Greg Rousseau liked us because that would be fun. He could easily be a replacement for Yannick. Cheetah Bay Awuzier, Eric McCoy, Cam Hayward. Yeah, not really loving the free agent class, I'm not going to lie. Oh, and there's Justin Fields. Interesting. So I guess um, he didn't work out with the Texans long term. Can we see who the interested teams are? Just like to see who's going after him. Doesn't look like it. He is interested in us, so... Thankfully, no love loss there, but yeah, he's not coming back unless he wants to back up Joe Burrow. And let's go ahead and send an offer to Evan McPherson just so we can get kicker locked up long term. I know Justin Tucker is getting up there in age. He's got one year left. Let's go ahead. I do want to see what's his level of interest in us. Okay, and we're top of his list by a pretty wide margin, so we can afford to bring that down a little bit. Let's just go ahead and do that. I mean, at the end of the day... Yes, he is an incredible talent, but he is a kicker. And that is the sad reality of it. Is this going to still keep us up top? I hope so. Yeah, we're still top of his list. So let's go ahead and evaluate offers here. I press the wrong button. Players have evaluated submitted offers. Okay. Who did we sign? Hopefully we're two, <clears throat> excuse me, two for two. No, we're not. Okay, so where are the guys that we're going after? Okay, so Trey Smith signed with the Titans. That's unfortunate. And Evan McPherson is getting heavy offers now from other teams. Where is he at? He's right there. Yeah, we're, we're not going to overpay for him. I mean, he's amazing, but... In sim, how much of a difference is kicker going to make? So we're going to stick with our cap space. We're just going to let it go. And honestly, I'm okay with not making any major moves this offseason. We have a great roster top to bottom. We've got to kind of save some money. We've been really active the last few years. So yeah, we're kind of setting out this year. And that's okay with me. And I know we're in win now mode, but just as a bit of a forward thinking move, I'm not saying I'm going to move him. But with his contract expiring and with us very likely not bringing him back after this year, entering his age 30 season, let's go ahead and add Yannick to the trade block. I just want to see for curiosity's sake what we could get for him. And if we get a haul, I mean, I think I might be willing to pull the trigger on that. Okay, so it took a few weeks, but we do have some offers. Let's start with Kyler Gordon, see what teams are willing to give us for him. Okay, so I wasn't expecting a whole lot to begin with, but yeah, I mean, these offers are just not any good. I mean, let me know in the comments if you're seeing one that you would personally take. I just am not. So I think I would prefer to have the depth at cornerback than to trade for some mediocre players. Although Miami, who is this P. Reed? Let's, take, let's just take a quick look at him. 
check him out. If he's younger, you know, still a guy on his rookie contract, he definitely has one of those awful looking rookie faces. So let's see what he is. Okay, so P. Reed is Pierre Reed. He is coming into his third year in the league, 23 years old, 80 overall. What's his dev trait? Star. Okay. He's a speed rusher. That's a scheme fit. You know what? Yeah, we're going to do that. And I mean, this is a win-win for us. We weren't going to pay Kyler Gordon. We get a guy who we can pay on the cheap for at least another couple of years. He can start for us immediately if we move Yannick. So again, we have offers for him. If we get him out of here, then we have immediately a player who can slide right in and start for him. I think this is a great move for us. And now that we've got Reed in the building, we really don't have as big of a need for Yannick. What can we get for him? So looking through the offers here, Mecole Hardman, no thank you, me no like that. Gabe Davis, we just don't need a receiver. Tennessee's offer is garbage. Pittsburgh is garbage. I love Chris Olave, but he's got to be like 25, 26 by this point of the series. Okay. Taylor Moten's not a bad player. We just, I mean, he's got to be pretty old at this point. Green Bay's offer isn't terrible. I just don't like the positional needs. Sauce Gardner? Really? Okay. That could be something. We basically do a flip-flop. Trade a corner for an end and an end for a corner. I love Sauce Gardner. That is interesting. A future second. That's the first draft pick I've seen that I really like. Elijah Mitchell. We just don't need that. Yeah, let's take a deeper look at Sauce and see what's going on with him, see if he's a potential target for us. Okay, so Sauce is 25 years old. He's an 83 overall, but playing down, likely because of his morale. And how are we doing at cornerback right now? I know we're probably a little bit thin. Yeah, we've got four guys on the roster. He would technically be our third, excuse me, our fourth cornerback, but that would be very nice depth for us. And we're just, we're thin at the position. We're top heavy, but we're thin. I'm going to go ahead and do it, especially because Yannick is just a player who I know I'm not going to pay. Sauce, I don't know if I would pay, but at least there's a chance there just because of his age. Let's go ahead. We'll accept that. And they also throw in a 75 overall right tackle, K Rivers. Don't really know a whole lot about him. Didn't look too deeply into him, but at least he gives us some depth at the position. So we're happy with that. So here is the new starting defense. Instead of Yannick Ngakwe, you've got Pierre Reed, a guy who is like six, seven years younger, still has plenty of room to grow. He's an 81 at 23 years old. I think that was actually a slam dunk move for us, especially since all it took was Kyler Gordon. I know the overalls are different right now, but truthfully, I feel like we upgraded at defensive end. I really do believe that. And I also feel like we upgraded at cornerback. I know Sauce is kind of hidden on the depth chart. He's a little bit buried behind Greg Newsome, Sneed, and Mike Hughes. But he's better than Kyra Gordon. So I feel like we really won at both positions. We picked up some late draft picks. And we got this right tackle as well. So we at least have some depth there. K Rivers, who is this? Let's look at him a little bit further. Oh, wow. So he is 22 years old with star dev. Yeah, I mean, that. when you take that into consideration, I didn't even look too closely into him, but wow, that's a win for us. Very nice. We'll take that any day of the week. And now it's time for the draft. And I'm going to be honest, I've delegated most of my decisions this offseason or the whole season leading up to the draft. I just have not put as much care into it as I normally do, just because the roster is so loaded. We don't really have any glaring needs. Let's go ahead and skip to our selection. I believe it comes from the Titans, 24th overall. Let's go ahead and look at our options. So what I did is I took a look through just some of the top guys. Vinny Oliver is third on the board, and a few things I like about him. He's 21 years old, very young, and his measurables are just elite. I mean, top five in every single category. Speed came in at 10th, but I mean, 36 reps on the bench. It's a luxury pick, but I feel like with the age and with those traits, we're just going to go for it. 
And yes, he's hidden dev, 89 strength. I don't even know if he'll be able to start right away. No, because we already have a center that we like. But worst case, you know, we cheese it a little bit. We move this guy to guard. And I think that's a really good pick for us. So Vinny Oliver, welcome to the Bears. Next up, we should have a second round pick. We do. Let's take a look and see who's available. So again, looking at our top picks on the board, Russell Copeland stuck out to me because his top four stats are all pretty solid. B block shed, B pursuit, C tackling, which isn't great, A to C zone coverage. And I do want to look and see just how he performed at the combine. I feel like that is just always a really solid way to know if you're going to get a good guy. And his numbers are just elite. He is sticking out to me. So again, not going to be an immediate starter, but gives us some depth, especially with Andrew Young's rookie contract coming up here shortly. Let's go ahead and take him, see how that works out. And again, we get a hit and dev guy. I feel like it's really easy to scope these guys out. Really, just look for guys who are younger, even though he's 23, not the youngest, but just guys who really excel at the combine. I feel like that is kind of a surefire way, or at least a very safe way to find guys who are going to do well for you and are going to have that hidden dev that is so important. Next up, we've got a pick in the fourth round. Let's go ahead and see who's available. So once I get to this point in the draft, I'm kind of just looking for guys who don't look terrible. I definitely don't want to see any Fs. I want to see as few Ds as possible. So the first guy who really sticks out to me is Sean Carruthers. His block shedding is a B to a D, so it doesn't have to be a D. C finesse moves, C power moves, B tackling. So at this point, depending on how he does in the combine, he's 22 years old. He's the strongest defensive tackle, 38 reps. All of his number, other numbers are great. He's pretty fast for a DT. What's his weight and his height? 295, 62. At this point, why not take the risk? Normal dev, that's okay. 90 strength, at least gives us some depth there. So we'll take that, not bad. The next selection that we have does not come until the 6th, so at this point we're just so late in the draft, it really just doesn't matter. These are kind of dart throws at this point. And I'm going through my list here, I'm just not seeing anyone I love a whole ton. Easton Brooks might be decent, let's take a look, see how he did at the combine, he's just 22. How was he? Ugh, not really a great athlete. I'm going to try and trade back. I haven't done that at all this entire draft, so I think that's okay. So yeah, all that anyone is offering is a sixth round pick in next year's draft, so we're just going to pick at random here. Who do we like? The Colts. We'll trade with the Colts. We'll pick up an extra six. It doesn't really matter at this point, and I know that we have a handful of seventh round picks just from trading back, trading players away. We're just going to go ahead, we'll skip to the end of the draft. I genuinely don't care who we take at this point. They're going to be fringe roster guys, probably not make it. So yeah, I'm okay with whoever the CPU decides to take. So let's get into our draft recap. We are officially in the 2025 season, man. Time flies when you're having fun. How did we do? So Vinny Oliver, first round center, again, kind of a luxury pick for us. He's a 73 overall, but definitely room to grow. Russell Copeland, also a 73. These guys both have hit and dev, so happy with those. We did take a running back later on who is a 68 overall, although his athletics are just not amazing. Okay. Yeah, so not really, you know, an exciting draft, nothing to write home about. However, I think that, you know, some of these guys can be contributors down the line. I definitely think these are guys that we can develop. So let's move on and get into the season. And so when we do our weekly training every week, these are going to be our focus players. Russell Copeland and Vinny Oliver, our first two draft picks, and then Pierre Reed, who we traded for from the Dolphins. All guys 23 or under. Crazy that Pierre Reed has been in the league for a couple years and he's the same age as Russell Copeland, the rookie. So I definitely think that all three of these are guys that we can develop and all three can be solid starters for us. And the regular season is here and we get an exciting week one matchup. It's a Super Bowl rematch against the Baltimore Ravens. It looks like they declined a little bit in the offseason. If I recall, they were like a 90 overall when we faced them. So it looks like some moves had to be made. They definitely went down a little bit, whereas we were able to pretty much retain all of our talent. So let's go ahead and get into it. We've got a couple messages and we will see how we do. 
season goal will be the same as last year win the super bowl if we did it last year i definitely think we can do it again we're returning pretty much the same team so i think that's more than realistic for us opening day keys what are the keys to winning week one against lamar and the ravens it's opening day and a fresh start for every team. What's the key to victory? We're going to go dominating offense, and we're going to dominate with the passing game. Joe Burrow is going to prove that last season, of course, no, nobody would call it a fluke, but we're going to show no Super Bowl hangover, no rust to kick off. We're just going to get right back into it. Game plan elite quarterback. That's our next and final message this week. Facing a quarterback like Lamar Jackson always presents an immediate challenge. What style of play will give him the most trouble? Unrelenting pressure or blanket coverage? Okay, we're going to go pressure. See if we can bring him down. We want to have two sacks on defense and we'll have plus five finesse and power moves. That's very good. And we had plenty of staff points to spend, so we're going to make our way all the way down to after school tutoring, which is a huge boost for us. It allows us to access several additional focus players through weekly strategy, so even more young guys that we can help develop, that will be very good for the team long term. Okay, no more talking, week one is here, can we start off the season with a win in our quest to repeat as Super Bowl champions? Big test and we do lose, 35-31, the Ravens come in and they get revenge in a shootout. Lamar comes out and has a very nice day. Joe Burrow was okay. Two picks, one interception. How did we do rushing the ball? Lamar definitely had his way with us this time. We should have focused on that game plan. Javante scores twice. DeAndre Swift scores twice. Von Rayford gets a few carries. Marquise Brown has a big game. Demarius Priester scores. Evan Ingram scores. And Darnell Mooney, the former Bear scorer, so he is a Baltimore Raven. I was wondering where he went. Sebastian Hewitt and Jonah Jackson each let up sacks. Defensively, Isaiah Simmons was our top tackler, as has been the case for most of this series. When you look at the sacks, Leonard Barker, DT, had one. Marcus Davenport also had one. Good to see Barker getting in there now that he is finally a starter. And we did not have any interceptions. So week one loss, not the best start. But when you're facing the Ravens, it was a close game. I think we'll bounce back just fine. So next up, we get the Steelers, also 0-1. They do have Najee Harris, 96 overall. Kenny Pickett is just not very good, 75. So Najee's definitely going to be our focus this week. As far as the defensive side of the ball for them, TJ Watt is still there, 97 overall. So we'll want to worry about him they did bring in derwin james so him and minka i'm assuming are still working together and that should be a good test for us week two can we bounce back we fell to an afc north team week one can we get the win against one week two and we do get a narrow victory 24 21 so we get back to 500 here in week two we've already lost as many games as we did all of last season but back on the board with a win so that's encouraging Joe Burrow had a decent game, efficient for sure. Kenny Pickett struggled through an interception, and we sacked him six times. That's pretty crazy. Javante with a good game, 108 yards and two scores. Not a whole lot else going on. In the receiving game, pretty quiet around the board. Jerry Judy did score the single receiving touchdown of the game. As far as the offensive linemen are concerned, Greg Reynolds, their right tackle struggled, as did their left tackle, Blaine Richardson. We did not let up a single sack, according to that screen. Andrew Young was our leading tackler. How did we do on sacks? Who was getting in there? Marcus Davenport with two and a half. Leonard Barker, second straight week in a row. Roquan Smith, Ed Oliver, Sean Carruthers, the rookie gets in for a half sack. Very good game all around by our defensive line. You'll love to see that. And Greg Newsom with the interception. So, yes, very encouraging week for us. This is what we wanted to see. And now that we're in week three, players are ready to start negotiating. And right off the bat, a huge positive for us is that we are going to be entering with around $72 million in cap space. Now, Javante still does not like us. This is most likely his last year with the team. So moving on from him... Justin Tucker is lukewarm on us. He's 35, and I wouldn't hate to bring him back. Jaquan Brisker, this is good. He likes us a lot. 26 years old. What does he want? A five-year deal. 
We can't negotiate with him until week five, just kind of looking ahead here, but I think he's a lock to come back long term. Evan Ingram does like us, but for what he's going to want, I don't know. Honestly, if he's 30 years old, do we really want him through his age 34 season? I don't think so. Jonah Jackson likes us and is just going to want a two-year deal, so I think we could possibly work something out there. Sauce Gardner likes us a lot. I mean, that's a very full bar. We might even be able to lowball him. I just don't know how much we would need him. Braxton Jones, meh. Everyone else, meh. So, as far as our pending free agents go, we're in really good shape. Everyone likes us, so we shouldn't have to hugely overpay for anyone. The only downer is Javante, so could be worse. And week three, we get the Commanders 1-1, one one, coming in with an 83 overall record. Ryan Tannehill is their quarterback. That's interesting. Antonio Gibson is still around for them, even though they hate him in real life. We're still going to go defend deep pass, just to kind of force Tannehill into a bad game. He threw three interceptions against us last year. Chase Young is at 98 overall, so we're going to worry about him for sure. They still have Kendall Fuller, but we're going to go blitz counter there. And I'm thinking this should be a win, I'm hoping. And we do get the win. We score 24 points, second week in a row. We get the victory, 24 to 16. Solid numbers, we'll take that. Joe Burrow with another nice game, 309 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Ryan Tannehill throws a touchdown, no interceptions, gets sacked twice, so he has a decent game. Javante has an okay game. Von Rayford does score a touchdown. In the receiving game, Evan Ingram is your leader with 93 yards. Jerry, Ju excuse me, Jerry Judy hauls in two touchdowns. Quintez Cephas scores for the Commanders. On the sacks front, Sebastian Hewitt and Jonah Jackson each let up one. Andrew Young is again the leading tackler, also picks up two TFLs. And in the sacks department, Chase Young sacks us while Roquan and Leonard Barker each get a sack. So that's three games in a row now where Leonard Barker is getting a sack. He's having a bit of a breakout, I would say, early on in the year. And I don't believe there were any interceptions. No, there were not. But we're up to 2-1. and one. Next up, we get the Vikings, 84 overall. We did sweep them last year. Dalvin Cook is still here, still a 94 overall, very good player. Chris Costanzo, 87 overall, he is an X-Factor, so definitely going to be a concern for our defense. We'll want to keep an eye out for him. They've got Miles Jack, very good linebacker, and Andrew Booth, 84 overall, star dev corner. So it's going to be a tight game, but still, I think, win. Let's find out. And we get our first huge victory, I would say, of the year, 35-14, one of those dominant wins that we were so accustomed to last season. Let's take a look at the stats. Bit of a mistake-riddled game for Joe Burrow. He does throw two interceptions, a bit uncharacteristic for him, but doesn't matter, throws three touchdowns and gets the win. Chris Costanzo, we force into a bad day, one touchdown, two picks, we sack him four times. Worth noting, Joe Burrow did not get sacked at all. In the run game, Javante puts up 71 yards. Von Rayford scores another touchdown. In the receiving game, Gabe Davis is a Viking now. He gets 83 yards. Donovan DeBose with 68 and a score. Jerry Judy with 66 and a score. Irv Smith is still a Viking, and he scores a touchdown. Evan Ingram gets in the end zone for us. On the sacks front, we did not allow any, so very happy with that. Mike Hughes led the team with tackles, also picks up an interception and half a sack, so he was very involved this week. Andrew Young gets a sack. Leonard Barker again, fourth week in a row. Ed Oliver is back in there. And Roquan picks up the other half sack. Who got the other interception? Brian Asamoa picked off Joe Burrow twice, so very good game for him. And Legereus Sneed was our other player to pick off the Vikings quarterback. Okay, good game. We'll take that. And since we're in week five, we can negotiate with Jaquan. So let's go ahead and do, if we go team friendly, what does that do for us? So he wants five year, 5.7. I'd still like to have him around for five. Can we just bring down the numbers just a little bit? Will that be good enough? You know I love this team, but this deal is just wrong. Bro, it's pretty close to what you wanted. Why are you being a crybaby? Okay. So, 
We're going to need to wait another week on old Mr. Brisker. That's fine. Whatever. Justin Tucker, can you give us a reason to be happy? Will you accept a neutral offer, dear sir? This offer is perfect. Well, you're perfect. Thank you. Next up on the schedule is the Panthers, the team that we faced in the conference championship game. They're 2-2, two and two, 86 overall, but this could kind of be that game to get their season back on track. And look who their quarterback is. Oh, man. Who else could it be but Justin Fields himself? We're going to defend that deep pass. He's bouncing his way around the league. He's the new Baker Mayfield. I shouldn't say that. Baker doesn't really bounce his way around. Just the Panthers connection. For how poorly he's... Well, I, would, I shouldn't even say poorly. I'm done piling on Justin Fields. I'm still bitter from the first couple episodes, but that's not his fault. And we get the win against the Panthers. 35-24, relatively close. So Justin Fields has... You can't even call it a revenge game because he lost, but he at least put up a fight this time, unlike his tenure with the Texans. Joe Burrow plays mistake-free football, 304 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Justin Fields really does everything he can, 364 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. We sack him six times, though. We were all over him. Javante scores twice. They have a running back, Matthew Henning, who scores a touchdown. In the receiving game, Van Jefferson is now a Panther. He has a good game, 128 yards and a score. Donovan DeBose is over 100 yards. Jerry Judy scores twice, and Von Rayford gets a receiving score, as does Tommy Tremble for the Panthers. As far as sacks go, Joe Burrow was held upright. That's good. Ed Oliver was the leading tackler with two TFLs and three and a half sacks, man. I saw that we had a weekly award. I figure it's probably got to be him. Roquan with one and a half. Mike Hughes with a half. And Pierre Reed, the not a rookie, but the new guy with half a sack. He finally gets in there here in week five. No interceptions, of course, but we get the win. So heading into a bit of an early bye week, we are either four and one or five and one. I want to say four and one. Not sure why the math isn't mathing, but yeah, we're four and one, so we're in good shape right now. Let's get back to Jaquan, see if we can appease him since he is having a little bit of a hissy fit. We went a little bit below neutral. How do you feel about neutral? The software is perfect. I can't wait till next year. Okay, good. Glad to hear that your hissy fits over. Thank you for that, and we'll see you for the next five years. Outside of that, not really anyone I want to start talking to immediately. Evan Ingram, I'm still pretty convinced, is not going to be back long term. So we'll leave it for now. Here in week seven, we've got the Browns coming in with a two and four record. They are down to an 81 overall. So a team that started Madden 23 with a very high rating, fall from grace, and I would say well-deserved based on who they have at quarterback. Enough said about that waste of space. They still have Miles Garrett, 99 overall. So we'll want to worry about him for sure. Denzel Ward is still there, very good. So yeah, it should be tough. Despite the rating, they still have some players, that's for sure. And I think we're addicted to scoring 35 points at this point. 35-24, that seems like, I feel like I've seen that score before. But we get the win, so that's what matters most. We'll take that. And yeah, this is our third week in a row scoring 35 points. The second week in a row where the score has been 35-24. So, interesting little nugget there. In the passing game, Joe Burrow is okay. Um... This human filth has a decent game, I suppose, just looking at the numbers. Von Rayford scores a rushing score. So does T Tavon Adkins, a rookie running back for the Browns. Donovan DeBose over 100 yards. Amari Cooper scores. David Bell out of Purdue scores. Javante Williams has two receiving touchdowns. Very nice for him. And Jonah Jackson lets up two sacks. Isaiah Simmons, our leading tackler, also has two TFLs. And in the sacks department, Ed Oliver has two. Very nice for him. And we hold Miles Garrett at bay, so that's a positive. Denzel Ward does get an interception on Joe Burrow, and that is your ball game. 
Week 8, we get a big matchup with the Dallas Cowboys coming in with a 6-1 record and 80... F- yes, excuse me, 6-1 record, 86 overall team. Let's get into the weekly strategy, see who some of our top threats are going to be. So they still have Dak, of course, 92 overall, X-Factor. Zeke somehow is still not declining. He's a 94, so maybe EA nerfed the um, regression a little bit because Zeke, by old Madden standards, should be down to like an 82 by now with how old he is. Micah Parsons is a force, and Trevon Diggs is probably going to let Demarius Priester put up 250 yards on him, but he'll probably pick us off twice, so we'll see how that goes. And unfortunately, we do take the L, 38-27. They put up quite a bit of points on us, not loving that. It is the Cowboys, but at this time last year, it didn't matter. We were just coming in and blowing the doors off of anyone. It looks like they put up over 500 yards of offense. Dak has a nice game. Burrow's efficient, just nothing flashy. Zeke scores twice. Javante scores. Austin Wolf, Cowboys running back, also gets a touchdown. Jerry Judy, 115 and a score. Brandon Cooks is still around. He puts up 100 yards and a touchdown on us. And Zeke gets a receiving score. In the pass blocking game, Sebastian Hewitt and Landon Craig each let up sacked. Isaiah Simmons, your leading tackler with 12, also picks up a TFL. And with sacks, Roquan gets one. Mike Hughes and Russell Copeland, the rookie, split the other. I don't believe we picked off Dak. No, no interceptions this game. So as a whole, it's been pretty quiet for our secondary. I don't love that. And what a game this will be. We get the 6-2 Bengals. They're an 84 overall. Joe Burrow's former team. Who do they have taking over for him now? It is Matthew Stanley. 80 overall, superstar dev. I would have to imagine they probably drafted him last year. I would guess this is his second year. Joe Burrow is a 99 overall. Somehow not an X-factor, though. We want to defend their deep pass just because we don't want Joe Burrow's replacement to pass all over us. Looks like they have a very good offense. Trey Hendrickson is still around, 87 overall. Jesse Bates is up to a 95 superstar. We're going to go blitz counter. And let's hope we get the win. Okay, so not ideal. We lose our second game in a row. And what ended up being a huge shootout, 41-38. Matthew Stanley is actually leading the league right now in passing yards and touchdowns, it appears. So I'm going to go ahead and assume we did not hold him in check based on the 40 points they just put up on us. Yeah, they're over 500 yards. That's not good. 342, two touchdowns and a pick. Joe Burrow actually has a pretty similar game. 408 yards, two touchdowns, a pick, and both quarterbacks sacked twice. It was a good game. Burrow ran all, excuse me, not Burrow, Joe Mixon ran all over us, 145 yards and three touchdowns, that's unacceptable. Javante puts up 61 and a touchdown, Joe Burrow rushes in a touchdown. In the receiving game, Marquez Callaway puts up 130 yards, Jerry Judy, 118 and two scores, Donovan DeBose, 97 yards, nothing else going on outside of that. Sebastian Hewitt lets up a sack. Junior York. The rookie led the game in tackles. Isaiah Simmons is top for us with 11. Levante David is a Bengal. Interesting. Ed Oliver picks up a sack. So does Roquan. Roquan's actually had a decent number of sacks this year for the position that he plays. Greg Newsom picks us off. Excuse me, Greg Newsom picks off their quarterback. And Jesse Bates picks off Joe Burrow. So yeah, two-game lose streak. Don't love that. The question now, though, is can we bounce back? And for a defense that's been struggling, I don't love the prospects of playing Pat Mahomes in the 6-2 and two Chiefs. He is still a 99 overall. I wonder who he has at running back. Still Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, up to a 90 superstar. We'll go defend deep pass, not that it's been working entirely in our favor. Who do they have on defense? Chris Jones is still around, 94 X-Factor it looks like. And Trent McDuffie is 88 star dev. We're going to go, we'll say throw at medium. Get some of the mid pass game going for what has been a bit of a mid season so far. But can we get the win? Let's hope and pray that we do. 
and thankfully we do get the much needed victory 24 14 it looks like we hold the chiefs offense in check we needed that especially now that we've got a huge matchup with the six and three packers and this is very encouraging for our defense. We went a few weeks in a row. We let up 38 points to the Cowboys, 41 to the Bengals. To allow Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs just 14, that's encouraging. Under 300 yards of total offense. Dwight Olsen, looks like they let him get in there for a trick play, I guess. Burrow has a decent game, two touchdowns and a pick. Mahomes is not very good, one touchdown, a pick, only 183 total yards. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire scores quiet game for Javante who honestly has not been tearing it up this whole year so must be frustrating playing on the franchise tag but too bad so sad Jerry Judy 110 yards and a score Juju scores against us and Von Rayford gets a receiving score Jonah Jackson lets up a sack as does Joe Tooney of the Chiefs Isaiah Simmons your leading tackler also picks up a TFL Andrew Young sacks Mahomes, Chris Jones sacks Joe Burrow, and who got an interception for us? Jaquan Brisker, who we just locked up long-term a few weeks ago, so very encouraging game for us. And we do have a focus player, Jay Hawkins is a pretty cool name, I'm not going to lie. I will keep an eye on him, maybe he's someone we go after. Just as a fun little side note there, and a preview for the next part, if there is a next part. And after that much-needed bounce-back win, we've got a huge matchup here. We have just had a brutal stretch of games, but it's the 6-3 and three Packers, 85 overall. They struggled a little bit last year. We swept to them, actually beat them three times. We faced them in the playoffs, so they're coming in. I mean, they've got to be mad at this point. Dylan Wall is, of course, the quarterback. We're going to go defend medium pass, see if we can kind of, you know, take away that intermediate game. But they're coming in with the number four offense in points per game and yards. So very good offense. They don't turn over the ball a whole lot. Their rushing defense is good and they force some takeaways. So, I mean, my favorite thing is just always to go. They still have Jair. He's a 99 overall. I always go blitz counter. I figure if we can keep those sacks to a minimum, then everything else will fall into place. But can we beat the Packers, take sole possession of first place in the NFC North? Okay, so it might be time to start worrying a little bit. We lose 45-37. to 37. Our defense is just not cutting it. I don't know why. We're at 92 overall. This is worrisome. I'm not going to lie at all. This is definitely cause for concern. Okay, so Dylan Walls had his way with our defense. Total revenge game for the Packers. Five touchdowns, no picks. Unacceptable. Joe Burrow struggles with two touchdowns and three picks. I don't know if it's a Super Bowl hangover or what. There's no reason we should be losing these games like this. Javante scores. Dylan Walls has a rushing touchdown for good measure in a career game. Elijah Moore is a new Packer. 137 yards, three touchdowns. Demarius Priester scores. Josh Perry, the Packers scores, Evan Ingram scores, and so does Brandon Kilgore, rookie for the Packers. Moving on, we don't really care about the sacks anymore. I think I'm done looking at those. Isaiah Simmons with 10 tackles, Roquan's next up with 9. Genuinely, I just don't really care about the stats from this game. Roquan gets a sack, okay, good for him. And Jair and Eddie Younger each pick us off. Oh, so does Marquise Blair. Okay, yeah, so there's your three picks. Okay, so next up we've got the Lions, and I think we might be able to call this a must-win game. They're coming in with an 86 overall record. They're one game behind us in the North. We are one game behind the Packers, so a win here would keep us afloat, a loss, and you could probably start to sound the panic alarms. And of course, Devin Leak is up to an 80 overall, normal Dev, and gosh, what do we want to defend here? We're going to defend the run. We're going to defend the run. We haven't picked that in a while. Maybe if we slow down the run game, we can get something going through the air. And we're going to go blitz counter. We can't have Nick Bosa just wrecking the whole game plan for us. We got to get a victory here. We have to. Bro, what's the deal? 41 to 38. How is this happening? I am honestly at such a loss. So Joe Burrow has a pretty good game, 445 yards, two touchdowns, picked, sacked three times. Devin Leak has a very nice game, probably should have defended the pass. 
J.K. Dobbins, of course, scores three touchdowns. Javante scores once. Von Rayford gets two rushing scores. Donovan DeBose does have a huge game, 184 yards and a touchdown. Jerry Judy over 100 yards. Evan Ingram scores. Hawkinson scores twice on us. I just don't get it. Andrew Young and Isaiah Simmons, each with 14 tackles, a TFL for each of them. Are we not getting pressure? It's not really looking like it. We sack Devin Leak once. Leonard Barker and Marcus Davenport split one. We don't pick him off. It's been forever since we've had even one interception. I, I genuinely just do not understand. And I think what we're going to need to do is we know we have the talent. I think a playbook changes in order. The number 10 offense, the number 22 defense, it just doesn't feel like that. It genuinely feels like we should be dead last. How many 40-point games have we allowed? Who's got the number one defense right now? The Colts? Okay, so similar to what Matt Eberflus is running, it should be a 4-3. Do we change the playbook to the Colts' defense? I mean, they're getting takeaways. Looks like they've got 11 interceptions. That's pretty high. Whoa, the Falcons have 20. That's crazy. They're, they're down there a little ways, though. I think we're going to switch it up to the Colts defense to see if that can save things for us because as of right now, I think we might be on the outside looking in for playoffs and that's not good. So the playbook change is complete and I mean, you tell me, why are we struggling? The defensive line is good. Sure, we lost Yannick, but he was getting up there in age. Pierre Reed is an 83 overall. That's not that big of a downgrade. He's younger. He should be doing something for us. The linebackers are good. The corners are really good. We've got depth there. The safety duo is top notch, I would say. I mean, is John Johnson the problem? He's down to an 86. The trade deadline's passed. I mean, we've got Landon Babineau. We took him a while ago. The overall difference just isn't worth benching him. I feel like we got to keep him in there. Let's hope for a bounce back game here. We get the Rams, they're four and seven, 81 overall. We know they've got some top tier players, but they're definitely beatable. Jameis Winston is now the quarterback. Did Stafford retire? Stafford must be elsewhere. Cam Akers is still around. We're gonna go back to defending the deep pass. We know Jameis likes to air it out. They don't have a good offense. They do have a good defense. They get a lot of sacks. So of course we gotta go blitz counter which I don't feel like we've been wrong in doing. Sacks are going to dictate the flow of a lot of games. A lot of games where we've gotten those five, six sacks in the other quarterback have been those games, of course, that we win. So we can't allow Aaron Donald to wreak havoc against us. Okay, and we need this. We get, excuse me, we get the win 28-21. We don't allow a lot of points for once, it seems. We needed that. So after the last four games, we went one and four in that stretch. We finally get the victory. Is this what we needed to get back on track? How did the stats play out? Jameis actually did have a good game, but we do sack him seven times. So that's key. Burrow has himself a pretty good game. Three touchdowns, just one pick. Javante scores a touchdown. Cooper Cup scores twice, Clayton Connor, the Rams scores, Jerry Judy scores, Demarius Priester gets two touchdowns, tackles, Isaiah Simmons with 13, good game for him. Who is getting in there on Jameis? I mean, seven sacks is really good. Three and a half for Ed Oliver, three for Davenport. Of course, Aaron Donald gets one. Pierre Reed gets a half. Good. So we switch the playbooks and immediately get seven sacks. Still no interceptions. I don't understand that with this secondary, but I'm not going to complain too much. And now we're already on to week 14. So the playoffs are starting to take shape. The good news is despite that really bad stretch, we're just a game behind the Packers and they're on the horizon here in the next few weeks in week 17, but we've got to focus on the Lions. They're six and six. They already beat us once. So if the last game wasn't a must win, this one definitely is. As of right now, we're looking at the seven seed, which considering the fact we went 16 and one last year, it's a bit of a fall from grace. The Super Bowl hangover though, it's not determined yet. We do have to win this game though. And admittedly, I've done a poor job of reading these messages just because at this point in the rebuild, they're so repetitive. They say the same thing over and over again. But maybe this is just what we need. So how are we going to handle the short week? If it would load, that'd be great. 
As you know, short week this week. These quick turnarounds are especially tough. So Evan Ingram is now our BFF. He is our consult in the locker room. Beat the Lions and score four offensive touchdowns. Okay, I think we can do that. Let's hope so. And so it looks like my theory might have actually been right. EA rewards us for reading their lazy messages. We get a dominant win, 45-14. Did we just turn our season around? It's a legitimate question. We get up to 8-5. and five. We are right on the Packers' tail with a huge matchup coming up in two weeks against them. Let's get into the stats. So Joe Burrow has himself a good game, 230 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Devin Week, we pick him off four times. We're finally getting those interceptions, and the sacks are still high. We get five. That playbook changed, man. That might have done it. Javante scores a touchdown. He does fumble. Von Rayford scores twice, so that's encouraging. Demarius Priester with 83 yards. Jerry Judy scores. And Donovan DeBose scores. Okay, love to see that. Let's see here. Jaquan leads the team in tackles with nine. He also picks up an interception. Good, that's encouraging to see. Leonard Barker with two and a half sacks. We needed that from him. Marcus Davenport gets one. Roquan and Sauce split one. Ed Oliver also with half a sack. Ed Oliver has quieted down a little bit from his 12th sack season last year. And look at John Johnson rewarding us for not benching him. He gets two interceptions along with Jaquan's interception. And Isaiah Simmons is in there for one as well. Okay, huge, huge victory for us. We needed that in a major way. And let's read our message about our short week. See that plus 10 morale boost, I think it is. We've seen this so many times now. Who said short weeks had to be tough? So Evan Ingram, you said it best. 2,500 XP, there's that plus 10 morale. Okay, good, we definitely needed that. And let's see if we can keep it rolling here. We've got the five and eight Eagles. They are an 85 overall. They've got a good team. Who are their top threats? Charles Peralta, quarterback, doesn't look very good. Miles Sanders is an 88 overall. What is that hair, bro? Okay, we've got George Washington on the other sideline. They do have Jeffrey Simmons. He's a 97 overall. Of course, we'll want to keep an eye out for that. And C.J. Gardner-Johnson. So just on the basis of those two players, it looks like they should have a good defense. They just don't for some reason. So what's getting it done for them? They're number four in passing yards. So Thomas Jefferson has been airing it out. Okay, can we get the win though? And look at this, man. 42 to 10. This is a dramatic turnaround from where we were a couple weeks ago. Let's check the stats. We're tied with the Packers right now. They're a week away. And I'm proud of this team. Recent weeks, a three-game win streak, and the last two have just been complete blowouts. This team is mad. They heard the media talking. The Bears are finished. Joe Burrow is washed at 30. I mean, we've heard crazier things. But he comes in and throws four touchdowns, no picks. Peralta has a pretty quiet game, so he does get sacked six times. This pass rush is pissed. 91 yards for Javante. Von Rayford scores and picks up 5.8 per carry, which had been a concern for him. And um, John Adams gets in, scores a rushing touchdown. Congratulations to him. Jerry Judy, 129 and two touchdowns. Casey Porter of the Eagles, over 100. Corey Davis is an Eagle. A.J. Brown, quiet game. Donovan DeBose scores twice. Very nice. Getting into the defense here. Who led the team in tackles? Roquan with just six. At TFL, he does pick up two sacks. So Roquan might be at double-digit sacks by year's end. That's crazy. Leonard Barker, again, having a good year. Two sacks, one and a half from Davenport. Andrew Young with half a sack. Did we get any interceptions? I don't believe so. No, none this game, but we'll take the sacks and the win. And I know we're all looking forward to the Packers, but we can't afford to get caught looking too far into the future because we've got to worry about the 9-5 New York Giants. Coming in with an 84 overall roster, and we do have a message, so let's go ahead and read that, get that good karma from the EA gods. Coach, you're tasked with facing the Giants and their high-powered offense. Where does stopping them start? constant pressure that's what we've been doing been racking up like five sacks a week they want us to get three I think we can 
Saquon Barkley is still here, somehow still a 94 overall. Baker is the opposing quarterback. Defend Deep Pass has been working out for us. Glad to see Baker in a winning culture again. That's good. Kayvon Thibodeau is up to an 88 superstar. They also have Xavier McKinney still as well. Blitz Counter has also been working out for us. How are their overall stats? I'm just curious since they're coming in with such a great record. So top 10 in just about every major offensive category. Looks like they're getting it done very well. Their rush defense is very good and they're number three in sacks. So big test for us this week. And with a few weeks left to go in the regular season, it's a good time to look at our contracts. So of course we know Sauce is up. He's 25 years old, he likes us. And at first, I was a little bit lukewarm, but then I realized Legereus Sneed and Mike Hughes are going to be coming due here in the near future, and I don't know how committed I am to either of them long term. So that does make Sauce a priority. I think him and Greg Newsom can be our long term duo. So I am incentivized. Let's see if we can get Sauce back in here. And of course, he really likes us. We're going to offer him a neutral deal. This would bring him in through his age 29 season. So perfect timing. He does like that. Sauce Gardner is locked up long term. And I would say as of right now, that Yannick Ngakwe trade was a huge win. We knew he wasn't coming back long term. And we'd take that and flip him for what can be likely an elite number two corner for years to come. I would say overall, that move was a massive win for us. And now with Sauce locked up long term, let's see if that's enough of a morale boost to take down the Giants and set us up for a pivotal matchup with the Packers. We're both 9-5, and five. we're both having really good years. Can we pull it off though? Yes, 34-27, we get the narrow victory. And not only that, we're coming into this a game up now on the Packers. Big news for us. And for the first time in a few weeks, it's not a blowout, but we are over 30 points. We get the victory by a touchdown. So overall, I'm encouraged by the results. Burrow with another good game. Baker, not a bad game. Didn't make any mistakes, but we sack him five times. As for the run game, Javante, 77 yards and a score. Saquon scores twice on us. In the receiving game, Russell Gage has a nice game. Demarius Priester scores twice. Javante gets a receiving score. Heading over to the defensive side, Isaiah Simmons is the leader with tackles. He picks up eight. And who was sacking Baker? Roquan gets two. Ed Oliver, one and a half. Leonard Barker gets one. Andrew Young gets a half. Okay, good. I don't think we picked him off. We did not. But that's fine. We get the win. And let's check our results because we did emphasize putting pressure on Baker Mayfield. So we should get a nice boost out of this. Creating pressure was a big talking point this week and stopping the Giants offense. It's like I said during the week, all defensive linemen will have plus five power and finesse moves for the next two games, plus five morale for all defensive players. And it couldn't be better timing. Now let's take a look at the playoff picture. Picture, excuse me, I don't know why I said picture. But as of right now, we're the two seed trailing the Cowboys. Do we have a chance to get up to that one seed and earn that first round bye? Let's take a look. They did beat us earlier in the year. They put up, I think it was like 41 points on us, something crazy like that. Do we even stand a fighting chance? They're 13-2, and two and we're 10-5, and five, so I wouldn't say so. Two seed is looking like our best bet. And we've got another message, Trench Boost. Given how reading these messages has worked out, we definitely want to take a look at that. We know this has to do with our offensive linemen. Coach, your team was able to throw at will in your last win. Of course, they don't get enough credit. The amount of sacks you allow will determine how much XP each offensive lineman earns. Okay, we can control that, I think. And this is by far the biggest game of the year. Prime time at Lambeau Field. I would say this is essentially for the NFC North. We're going to go defend deep pass. It's been working out for us. We can't afford to let Dylan Walls have a big game. And we'll go blitz counter because we want to control those sacks, of course. And let's get into it. Can we win? Can we take control of the NFC North heading into week 18? And we get the win. 31-21. It's a 10-point victory. 
and we have secured the NFC North. Mathematically, we won the division. We know we're getting a home playoff game. It got a little dicey there towards the midway stretch of the year, but we will take this. We're happy with that. Now let's take a look at the stats. This is probably the most important win of the year so far. It looks like we put up almost 500 yards of off, excuse me, yards of offense. Dylan Walls has a good game. We do pick him off once. Joe Burrow puts up pretty good yardage, 358, one touchdown, no picks, gets sacked twice. Javante scores a touchdown. Von Rayford scores a touchdown. Jerry Judy, 137 yards and a score. Elijah Moore gets a touchdown against us. He has been a problem in both games. And that will do it as far as your receiving stats are concerned. The leading tackler for us was Andrew Young. Did we get any sacks? I believe we got a couple. Yes, Ed Oliver came through with two. That's good. We'll take that. On the interception side of things, Greg Newsom gets a pick. And we get the win. And we've got an update on our trench boost, so should be pretty good news for our offensive line. Back-to-back -back games without allowing a sack. Okay, well that's just straight up wrong. Okay, but we'll take it. Entire line earns 10,000 XP. That's a huge boost for us. Let's look at the playoff picture, see where we are. We are the two seed. And as it stands right now, we would face off against the Packers next week in the wild card round. I would like to avoid that, I'm not gonna lie. I really feel like if we were to draw them again, it might not go our way, but we can't control that. All we can control is how we perform in week 18 against the Vikings, who despite their good roster, they are 4-12. and So let's see if we can get the win. And we do get the win. It's another 10-point victory as we top the Vikings 28-18. So we end up finishing the year with a 12-5 record. Not bad. So in the regular season finale, Joe Burrow has himself a very nice game. Three touchdowns, no picks. Chris Costanzo has an efficient game. We do sack him twice. Worth noting, Burrow does not get sacked. Javante has an okay game. Not really the best. I mean, 3.6 yards per carry. That's kind of ugly, I'm not going to lie. Gabe Davis has a nice game. Evan Ingram with 95 yards and a score. Might be about the end of the road for him as a bear, but we'll see. Jerry Judy gets a touchdown, Justin Jefferson does, so does Ronald Doling. And let's look at the defense. How do they perform in Week 18? Greg Newsom, the leading tackler, okay. And we should have a couple sacks here. Yes, Roquan gets one, Pierre Reed and Marcus Davenport each split one. Not bad. No interceptions, but we get the win, and we're happy with that. And with the regular season done, let's go ahead and take a look at those year-end stats. So we finished the year with a top five offense. We're happy with that. Our defense was struggling, but we step it up a little bit. We end up number 19, so not great, but, you know, could be worse. Burrow has a good year, not as amazing as what he did last year. 5,200 yards, 39 touchdowns, 11 picks, 70% completion rate, passer rating of 110. All things considered, we're very happy with that season. Looking at the rushing stats, Javante, bit of a down year for him. Sure, he scored 16 touchdowns, but 4.2, That I think that's his lowest yards per carry. Definitely his lowest yardage. Von Rayford, 3.5 a carry, does score 10 touchdowns. In the receiving game, you had Jerry Judy with 1,400 yards, 16 touchdowns. Very nice year. Donovan DeBose, second-year player, 1,300 yards, 5 touchdowns. Evan Ingram is next, almost 1,000 yards with 5 touchdowns. Demarius Priester, 947 and 6. That will do it as far as re relevant receiving stats are concerned. Last year, our leading sack allower was Sebastian Hewitt with 12, and he upgraded. He only allows 8 this year, so we got... Really nice work out of our offensive line. We've put together a really nice unit. Isaiah Simmons was all over the field, hauling in 151 tackles. No sacks on the year, but he does get an interception. Let's look at the sacks. And I know Roquan will be fairly high. Ed Oliver gets 16. That's surprising. Roquan does get 12 and a half, so interesting seeing him hit double digits. Leonard Barker, the third-year defensive tackle with a breakout season, hitting double digits. 10 for Marcus Davenport. We did trade for Andrew Young, did not love the production we got out of him, just three sacks. And I could have sworn we had him at end. Did the CPU switch him to outside linebacker? We're going to have to move him back. 
Regardless, let's look at the interceptions. Greg Newsom led the way with three. Not a whole lot else outside of that, and that sounds about right because I remember just week to week, we just really were not forcing turnovers. So regardless, we're happy with the performance. Could be a lot worse. Let's look at the year-end awards. Actually, before we do that, let's look at the player stats, see who some of the leaders around the league were. We're going to start with passing yards, and I know Joe Burrow was not first in the league for yardage, but who was? Matthew Stanley, his replacement in Cincinnati, 5,500 yards, 52 touchdowns, and 9 picks. Wow, I don't think they're complaining. Derek Carr is next up, 5,500 yards, just 33 touchdowns, 14 picks. Joe Burrow is next. Charles Peralta, a.k.a. George Washington, he has over 5,000. Dak's over 5,000, so is Josh Allen. Okay, those are your quarterbacks. Let's look at the rushing stats. Derek Henry is still getting it done, 1,700 yards. Jonathan Taylor, the Falcon, right behind him. Saquon scores 20 touchdowns, and Mixon has 26. Wow. As far as receiving is concerned, Cooper Cup again dominating, almost 2,000 yards again, 18 touchdowns. How does Devontae Adams put up 1,700 yards and just three touchdowns? That's interesting. Tyler, Boers, Tyler Boyd excuse me, scores 16 touchdowns. On the defense, as Miles Garrett out here getting 26 sacks again, or maybe that was Aaron Donald. Let's look at the sacks. And it was Nick Bosa leading the league with 21 and a half. Von Miller still putting up dominant stats at his 15th year in the league. 19 and a half is crazy for someone that age. And Darius Leonard leads the league in interceptions. He actually ties for it with Bryce Hall and Trent McDuffie. And here are your end of year awards. Matt Stanley wins MVP, Bengals quarterback. Would be interesting to see them in the playoffs. Burrow finishes ninth, and look who's right behind him, Justin Fields. Coach of the year goes to Zach Taylor, well-deserved. The Bengals go 14-3. and They have a great year. We get some votes. We finish eighth. Checking out the NFC Awards, Offensive Player of the Year. We get no votes. A bit surprising. Defensive Player of the Year. Ed Oliver comes in at eighth. Offensive Rookie of the Year. I doubt we're going to have any rookies here. We didn't have any rookies get any significant playing time, so nothing there. Best quarterback. Okay, Joe Burrow comes in at fourth. Interesting. Best running back. Javante comes in at eight. Receiver, Jerry Judy. There he is at two. Best defensive lineman. Roy Gentry, the left tackle, coming in at number two. Very nice. Elkton at three. And Landon Craig at eight. So three players in the top ten. Well deserved. Ed Oliver comes in at fifth for best defensive lineman. Best linebacker goes to Leonard Floyd, and Roquan gets some votes. Best DB, I don't think we're going to have anyone here. We do not. Best kicker, Justin Tucker does get some votes this year. He comes in at six. And now it's time for the playoffs. We've got a couple messages, and the last few weeks have told me it's good to read them. So let's see what the first one is. Coach, it's not often you have to play someone for a third time. Okay, what are we expecting this game? Hard-hitting brawl or chess match? That is actually an interesting question. We'll go chess match. I'd like for our player rec to go up. So defensive players on both teams will have plus five player recognition. All the marbles beat the Packers and advance to the next round. We actually faced them in the divisional round last year, so the rivalry is very intense right now between us and Green Bay. Cold opponent... So, they're going to ask how we're going to handle a struggling opponent. I mean, it's a playoff game, bro. Like, even if they lost Week 18, maybe they bench their starters. Who knows? Coach, the Packers are struggling. We're not going to give a smug response. We're going to go no fear. Cold streak, the Packers are struggling. All players will have minus five break tackle, play rec, and tackle. Okay. Beat the Packers and avoid falling victim to the trap game. Bro, EA, how, how is the wild card round a trap game? Like, I get it, the records are different, but bro, seriously? What a joke. Okay, let's do our weekly training. Dylan Walls, of course. Always gotta worry about Dylan Walls, the GOAT. And of course we go Blitz Counter. We can't have Burrow getting hit. We all saw the Super Bowl. Not that they have Aaron Donald to worry about, but still. All right, we split with them in the regular season. Can we get it done in the playoffs? 
move on to the divisional round for the second straight year, not have to end this video on a sour note, and we've done it. 21-16, we're moving on. And just to take a quick look around the wild card round, you had the Chiefs beating the Steelers in a close game. We'll come back to ours. The Jags beat the Chargers in a thriller. The Falcons topped the Bucks in a close game. The Broncos beat the Jets. Looks like they possibly pulled away late. And Seattle beats the Giants in another very good game. So, a lot going on here. Let's get into ours, though. Would have liked to see a little bit more of a gap between us and them as far as the final score is concerned, but we'll take it, especially when Joe Burrow's playing this well. Don't like seeing get him get sacked four times, but I guess we'll take it. Dylan Walls, we force him into a pretty mediocre game. Javante doesn't do a whole lot, but looks like the passing game was carrying us as Jerry Judy is at 122 yards and two scores. Christian Watson gets a score on us. Demarius Priester is in the end zone. Very nice there. As far as tackles go, Isaiah Simmons leads the team with 13, a TFL, and he picks up an interception for good measure. Did we sack Dylan Walls a whole lot? Yes. Ed Oliver had one and a half. And there is, where is he? Leonard Barker with the other half. So we got two sacks. We're happy with that. And there is Isaiah Simmons with your interception. And we're moving on to Seattle. And we've got some weekly awards to hand out, or to better phrase that, to receive. Joe Burrow and Isaiah Simmons each hauling in awards. On the AFC side, there's Trevor Lawrence with five passing touchdowns, so he's having himself a nice year, it appears. So next up are the Seattle Seahawks, coming in with an 86 overall team, 10-7. and seven, They won their wildcard game. And their quarterback is, looks like a younger guy, Scott Chambers, 79 overall star dev. They do have Kenneth Walker, who appears to be doing very well for himself. We always defend that deep pass. As long as we don't let the quarterback beat us, I think everything else will fall into place. Jordan Brooks, a great linebacker, looks like he's developed nicely. And Jamal Adams is still working around. We always go blitz counter, though. So let's get our training done. Okay, training is done. We're ready for the Seahawks divisional round. Can we advance to our second straight conference championship game? Let's find out here in just a second. Yes, and we have got a rematch with the dreaded Dallas Cowboys. 15-2, the force of the NFC. But first, we've got to see how we beat those Seahawks. 42-21, we got it done in relatively easy fashion. So let's check it out. And here are your divisional round games. So the Bengals are headed to the conference championship game. They win a close one. The Cowboys, they blow out the Falcons. They're coming in here hot. The Chiefs beat the Jags in a close game. So Trevor Lawrence's season is done prematurely. And here is our game against the Seahawks. So we put up 463 yards of total offense. Joe Burrow had a good game. Three touchdowns, no picks. And Scott Chambers had a good game. We did sack him three times. There's a positive. Von Rayford is actually the leading rusher. 72 yards and a score. Javante, for some reason, gets less carries, but he does score twice. So the run game was doing well for us. Demarius Priester with a touchdown over 100 yards. Kenneth Walker scores. Evan Ingram scores. So does T. Higgins for the Seahawks, Joe Burrow's former teammate. Jerry Judy gets in the end zone, and so does DK Metcalf in the loss for them. When you look at the tackles, Mike Hughes is the leader for us. He puts up seven tackles. When it comes to sacks, Roquan gets two, Ed Oliver gets one, Leonard Barker and Marcus Davenport split one. Interceptions, none. But we get the win, we're headed to the conference championship game. And we do have a message here, hot opponent, let's go ahead and read it. Coach, you're up against the Cowboys this week. They've been playing great football. Can you end their win streak? We are not insulting them. We're going to be confident. I feel pretty good. They've looked unbeatable. The Cowboys are playing well. All players will have plus 10 break tackle, play rec, and tackle. The vote of confidence has your team fired up. All players will have 10 plus break tackle, play rec, and tackle. Okay, and of course, beat the Cowboys to seal their momentum. Yeah, that, that's all we want to do is steal their momentum. Not like, you know, this game means anything. Just another regular season game. We just want momentum, right? Good job, EA. But let's get into the weekly training or weekly strategy, whatever we're calling it these days. Of course, here's Dak Prescott. Zeke is still tearing it up. Defend deep pass has not failed us in a while. Their offense is elite. Their defense is even better. 
I mean, this is going to be tough. Micah Parsons might be the best player in the game. Yeah, we've got our work cut out for ourselves this week. That much is true. We've got the advantage on paper. We are up to a 94 overall roster. They're an 87. But who else does EA love more than the Cowboys? Will it be enough? Oh my gosh. 49-42, bro. We did everything that we could, but we just could not quite pull it off. What a heartbreaker, man. Oh, okay. Let's, I don't know why it does this once the Super Bowl comes around. Let's go to the league schedule. Let's see how those conference championship games went. So, wow, just two very high-scoring games. The Bengals also lose what looks like a heartbreaker, a 10-point loss. We lose by a touchdown, 49-42. What a conference championship game. And look at the yardage difference. I mean, we outgained them 568-401, to 401, and we still lose by a touchdown. How does that happen? Dak has a literally a perfect game. Five touchdowns, no picks. We sack him five times. We did everything that we could. Burrow plays his heart out, does throw an interception, gets sacked just once, but five touchdown passes. Javante, possibly his last game as a bear, over 100 yards with a score. Zeke gets his touchdown. Ugh, heartbreaking. Receiving Jerry Judy balls, almost 200 yards and three scores. Devontae Smith scores twice. Demarius Priester scores twice. Michael Gallup scores twice. This game was just a shootout. Zeke with a receiving score. Oh my goodness. Leighton Van Der Esch was your leading tackler of the game. Isaiah Simmons was ours. And we sacked Dak five times. Who was getting in there? Marcus Davenport, two and a half. Ed Oliver, Leonard Barker. Roquan gets a half, and I don't believe there were any interceptions aside from Leighton Van Der Esch. Wow. What a way to go out, man. I mean, this I'm sad. I genuinely am sad about this. That's the end of the line for this season. Dang. And here's your Super Bowl recap as we fall to the eventual Super Bowl champion, Dallas Cowboys. They beat the Chiefs in what looks like a great game, 28-26, just topping them by two points. And that is going to do it for Super Bowl 50, 60, excuse me, in the 2025 NFL season. And we've hit the offseason. Let's take a look at our 2025 retirements. Who is on their way out? It was pretty quiet last year. In the AFC, who are your big names? Robert Woods, Cody Whitehair, Cam Hayward, Keenan Allen has retired, Joel Batonio, Garrett Bowles, Chris Hubbard, Micah Hyde, and Levante David. Pretty solid players. And in the NFC, Bobby Wagner, for sure Hall of Famer, Andrew Norwell, Charles Leno, the former Bear, David Bakhtiari, great Packer left tackle, Lane Johnson, Brian Anger, the punter, and Ryan Jensen. So... We didn't have any retirements, but we have a pretty young team overall. Not really a whole lot of guys even around or under the age of 30. So not that I expected any of our guys to retire. It is our last chance to negotiate with some of our pending free agents. As of right now, $62 million in cap. There's Javante. Javante, it has been a pleasure, my friend. But for whatever reason, you don't like us. Why, why don't you like us, actually? Before you go... Historic championships, mentor at position. What a stupid motivation. Like, bro, why why do you need a mentor? How old are you at this point? 26? Like, you haven't figured it out yet? Okay. And close to home. You want to be close to North Carolina. I get it. Okay. Not the worst reasons in the world. Evan Ingram, I'm going to let you hit the market. I don't think anyone's going to really go after you. And I think if we wanted to replace you, we probably could do a little bit better. Jonah Jackson, out of nowhere, doesn't like us, so he won't be back. That might be a hole for us to fill. Braxton Jones won't be missed. And really, none of these guys will be missed. Oh, look, Michael Clemens. He looks just like the Eagles quarterback with that weird Billy Joel-looking hair. Okay, so we're going to enter the offseason with a few holes to fill, but a lot of cap space. And with those departures, we did decline a little bit. Still a 92 overall, so still absolutely loaded. And now we've got money to spend. We didn't have a whole lot last offseason, but let's go ahead and take a look at our roster, see what we're entering the offseason with. 
When you look at the offensive side of the ball, obviously Joe Burrow is still there. The offensive line is still pretty much intact. We will need a new guard, but we have depth at other positions. Oliver is someone we could possibly move over. Rivers is a solid backup right tackle. So we have starting level guys. This, this really isn't a hole that we're going to have to worry about filling. Cole Komet is up to an 87. He's just been kind of quietly not complaining behind Evan Ingram. He's really been good enough to start for us. He just hasn't. Jerry Judy is up to a 98. Well deserved. I mean, he's been dominating the regular seasons. Donovan DeBose up to an 89. Priesters an 87. So probably the best receiving trio in the league. Javante's gone, but thankfully Von Rayford has also quietly developed up to an 85. Hopefully he plays up to that. Defensively, the line is in a good position. Um, Pierre Reed did not quite play up to his overall. Didn't get a whole lot out of him. Do we look to possibly upgrade there? Marcus Davenport's a 92, has to be getting up there in age. Leonard Barker and Ed Oliver, two great DTs, both coming off double-digit sack seasons. The secondary, I don't know what to say. I think it, I don't know if it's a playbook issue or what. It can't be a playbook issue. We just tr changed that, but I mean, you can't really upgrade over these guys. They just didn't get a whole lot of sacks, and the linebackers are about as good as it gets. So. We're in a really good spot here to contend again if we decide to run it back in the 2026 season. Another thing I like to do is to take a quick look at our pending free agent, see what holes we might have to fill in the near future, which guys we might have to worry about saving some money for to bring back. So Marcus Davenport, I think, is someone we will let walk after this year. Um, defensive end is going to be a position of need. Legereus needs same position. We're going to want to look to upgrade at cornerback. So defensive end and corner are two needs for us, I would say, in the draft right off the bat. Andrew Young, I think if he likes us, is someone we will want to bring back. Still just 24 years old. Same with Sebastian Hewitt. He's been a great left tackle for us. John Johnson, he's already 30. Um, that's going to be a no for me. Justin Tucker, he's been good for us. Um, again, we're going to have to make a decision on him, see if we want to bring him back. Who else we got? Landon Craig has been a very good guard for us. So three young guys, three, I believe these were our very first rookies that we drafted, and we did very well with them. Demarius Priester, we might have a little bit of wiggle room just because he's kind of our third guy now. Pierre Reed was the guy that we traded for from the Dolphins. Leonard Barker, the DT who just now broke out for us. Mike Hughes, Landon Babineau, who is solid. He just hasn't been able to crack that starting lineup. Maybe we get him on the cheap and develop him a little bit more. He's been here for a while. Derek Johnson, wide receiver. Just I don't even recognize him. He hasn't done anything for us. So yeah, I mean, a handful of guys that I definitely would like to bring back. A couple must-haves with Sebastian Hewitt, I think, leading the list for me. It's going to be an interesting offseason. And as of right now, these are the draft picks that we're working with. So we picked 29th and again at 61. So not really a high, great draft position, but we've got our first. We retained it, didn't trade anything away. So, you know, should be able to get a good guy there. And just in case this is it for us, I will give you guys a preview. Let's see who's out there in free agency, at least who likes us. Christian McCaffrey has a lot of interest, would be intriguing. I just don't know if we could swing that for him. Jamal Adams has a decent level, but we're set with Brisker. Brees Hall actually really likes us. He's up to a 91, but I think I'd like to see what we have out of Rayford. Who else is out there? Punner, who cares? Punner. Drake London likes us. There's Yannick again. We traded him away. Does he come back for a swan song? Dallas Goddard could... Eh, he's 31, though. Tyler Lockett's 33. There's Evan Ingram. He's got one team interested in him. Charles Cross is out there. So a pretty shallow free agent market. But I think the further that we look into this, the more we could possibly convince ourselves on... You know, maybe one or two of these guys. We're definitely not in a rush, though, because, again, this team is just loaded right now. 92 overall. So let me know in the comments, is this it for us? Have you seen enough of the Chicago Bears? Are you ready to move on, get going on the next team? And if so, 
Who is that team? Who do we go with next? Who would you like to see? And if we stick around with this series, what moves should we make? Should we go after some of these guys that we saw available in free agency? If so, who? Or do we save money and worry about retaining some of our own? Who should we prioritize? What positions do we go after in the draft? As always, I'm always eager to hear your guys' opinions. Um, any any type of dialogue we can create, just you know, let me know what your thoughts are. Genuinely, I'm curious. But I'm done rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it, especially if you've made it this far and you've just stuck with me to this point. Really, thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, comment. It helps my channel tremendously. Still trying to grow here. As of right now, I'm almost a 500 subscriber. So hopefully if you're listening to this right now, I'm well above that. But we'll see, and I will see you guys in the next video.